week on building a table for a friend. So one of my friends needed a new dining table for their dining space. They needed to seat seven people and she really liked a table from Pottery Barn, but it was $1,600 and Pottery Barn doesn't ship to Alaska. So I thought I'd help her out this week and build her a brand new dining table that's sized exactly for her space. So we're starting to work on this industrial style farmhouse table. We're going to work from the tabletop first and then after we get the tabletop done we'll build the base to go under it. So the first thing we did was we took some 1x6s and we cut them down to a little bit longer than we actually want them and then we ran them through the table saw so that the edges are nice and square and now I'm going to drill pocket holes along the 1x6s to join all the boards together edge to edge. So I'm using a Craig Foreman. This is just an automatic pocket hole jig. I'm going to take a second to pick the best side of the board. I'm going to draw pocket holes about every eight inches. Now we're going to cut the ends off later so that they're all the same. So I kept my pocket hole in just a little bit to allow for those ends to be trimmed later. I know where I'm at every eight inches because the deck here ends at seven inches, so if I just pinpoint kind of the spot that I just drilled the last hole, and then bring that past a little, I know I'm about eight inches. Once I get all the pocket holes drilled, it'll look like this. There's a pocket hole about every eight inches. You don't have to be exact, but just about that far is about what it needs. And so I've already started joining the tabletop boards together here. I'll just show you how I do it on this one. So, do glue. It's really important to work on a nice flat level surface so that way you have something to clamp to. We're trying to make a really nice table here um, and something that's easy to wipe clean. So we're taking all these extra steps. So I'm working from this side out so that my, can you see that? So my clamp can actually reach the joint at every single pocket hole. And this end, I'm kind of letting the ends run wild because we'll cut those off in place. And um, we'll probably trim this end too, but I'm trying to get them a little bit better. So I'm going to clamp right where the pocket hole joint is using inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. You don't want to strip that out, so just go to the point where you feel it grab, and then maybe a little bit further, and then that's good enough. So I'm just going to keep on going and get this tabletop whipped out. So I got all the tabletop boards pocket hole together and I'm going to let the glue dry on a flat level surface for a little bit. I can't work on this right now so I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to start working on the legs. Um, one of the things I was a little bit concerned about because the legs fit directly inside the tabletop is I wanted, um, I wanted to build the tabletop first so I can get a measurement of that width and then adjust how far apart the legs are so it all fits. So. Um, and go ahead and get my 4x4 legs cut, take a measurement of this overall width, figure out how long I need to make the end aprons, and then build the leg sets. So the legs are at an angle, so what I'm going to do is set my miter saw to a 10 degree off square cut. The measurement is long point to short point, so I'm just going to slide it down, the ends are parallel, and make my next cut. So 
So there's one leg. How these legs are going to work is I've got two four by fours and they'll go like this. And um, I'll have a two by four that comes across here. So I want a really strong joint between this two by four apron and the four by four. So I'm going to use my Craig HD dig jig to make sure it's a nice, secure, tight joint. So we're setting up the Craig HD. It is basically just a stronger joint and a bigger screw. Uh, but it works with the, the only difference is you just change out the drilling guides. This is the regular drilling guide and then this is the HD drilling guide. Just a little bit bigger. So this is the difference between a regular and HD. Those are the HD screws. The HD parts are just a kit that you add on to your standard Craig jig. It's not a super expensive add-on. Uh, we don't use it a ton, but when we need it, it's really handy. So we need to cut this end here off straight, and I think I have the perfect tool to do that with. This system is pretty neat. It's from Craig, and um, we just started using it. And what it is, what I really like about it, so we have a table saw, and this is kind of a different concept, because with a table saw, you push the wood through the saw. With this, you push the saw over the wood and it just kind of holds everything square. There's a lot of table saw accidents, so I feel like this is a much safer option and it's a lot less intimidating if you know, you're just getting into woodworking and you're not quite ready to start using a table saw. So um, we've got it all calibrated and set up, but we're just gonna use it to chop off that end of the tabletop. So I'm gonna put the tabletop under here and go from there. That was pretty awesome. Now we got a nice square edge from the table. We're going to turn around to the other side. Got this tabletop all done, the breadboard's ends on, and then we're kind of building up like a false side around it, but it also adds some structure and will keep the tabletop from warping. So that's why there's all the pocket holes and the glue. Um, I'm kind of measuring it as I go because uh, most tables, the tabletop overhangs the base, so you can be a little off. Like you can overhang three quarters inch and three quarters inch, or seven eighths of an inch and seven eighths of an inch. It's not gonna make a big difference. This table, the aprons need to be exactly flush, so every single board I'm, as I'm going, I'm measuring and cutting that to fit and working in that direction. So it's taking a little bit longer, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So my next step is 
to cut these side aprons. I'm going to use two by threes because they're going to span the entire length of the table and that's what's going to keep the table from sagging in the middle. So a little bit beefier there. And I'm also going to pocket hole that into the underside of the table. So um, another thing I did is I ripped the bottom of this two by three down. So you can see it's got a square edge on the bottom so it'll sit nice and flush to the tabletop. So I just got my measurements. I'm going to go ahead and make these cuts and drill the pocket holes and get it attached. Teamwork, right? leg set and this is definitely something you would want to consider doing two people just to help support it because the tippers are heavy and a little bit cumbersome but we're managing and this one will go like this but I've got to figure out where I want it. So this table is a big project. I worked on it a little bit last night and made some really big progress. Got the tabletop all done, the leg sets done. Now I'm gonna start putting the pieces together and hopefully get it finished today. Um, originally I had it where I was just gonna put the legs inside the underside of the table and screw it there and be done. But as I got to thinking about it, I wanna kinda of put the legs in with an inner structure to make sure it all sits level and then Put the entire top on top of it and then be able to screw through the apron. So I'm going to give that a go and uh, see how it works out. Alright, so now it's going to get a little bit tricky but I think I can handle it. Uh, so another reason I wanted to do this method is it gives me an opportunity to make sure that the base is sitting flat and not rocking before I put the tabletop on. Uh, one thing to be cautious uh, is garage floors are notoriously sloped. So that's why I'm over here working in the corner where the garage floor is more level. Um, if I was working like on the other bay right over the drain, I'd be building a crooked table. So, and, and of course you're gonna wanna put like felt pads underneath the table too, so that will help. here just to keep the tabletop from cupping or warping later on. So this table is going to have a pipe that will keep it the legs from kind of spreading out at the bottom. And this is just iron pipe. And what I'm going to do 
is drill holes and thread it through and then it'll keep the legs from splaying and it also just looks really nice. In the plans for this table, it's made for two pieces that are 36 inch long, the end caps and then this center union. So in the plans, I'll detail all the stuff that I'm using. The most difficult thing is going to be keeping my drills straight. So if you can have somebody to help you eyeball it and make sure that you're drilling level, that will really help. The tabletop's all done. Originally I was going to add some cross supports after I put the tabletop on, but we were dealing with a little bit of cuffing in the center of this tabletop because it's so long. So we just added them now and we left a little space on each end so the apron can ride right in there. So either way it will work. Um, this just happened to be a better solution for this particular situation. So there's no shame in getting some help when you need it. And this is a really heavy tabletop, so Jacob's going to help me put it on the base. One last thing I gotta do is plug the pocket holes that I drilled with the HD jig. So I bought some half inch dowels and a matching species to the wood so it'll take the stain the same. And I just cut them to, this is probably a little long, but, and then it just goes in there. And you can just measure the hole in your Craig jig if you have a different size to make sure it fits. I'm just gonna lightly tap it in there. Now, I'll pull it out and add some glue, but I'm, um, after I'm done dem demonstrating this. So then just get a flush cutter. This is a super handy tool for all kinds of applications. You want to start on this side and just start cutting. So now it's really the hard part is picking out a finish and committing to it and then applying the finish and making sure the top is nice and sealed so it's wiped clean. Now? Now? You can play hockey now. So my friend chose briar smoke for the stain so I just applied that. Um, I applied an extra coat to the top just to deepen it up and then poly on top to fully seal it and make it easy to clean. The results are really beautiful and it is just so smooth and um, just turned out really, really well. And I'm super excited to give this to my friend and see how she likes it and see how it looks in her room. So the, you can find a link to the plans in the description if you want to build this table. I can definitely help you out with it. Thank you so much for watching this week. I'll be back next week with another project. Happy Holidays.